Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're going to be doing my first fantasy booking, and we're going to be doing Roman Reigns' return to the WWE. Now, the reason why Roman left is because of all health issues, and the fact that he has two new children. Anybody would do this. <laughs> okay, I would do this. I'd be like, yeah, I don't want to wrestle, especially uh, with my kids. But yeah, but since I am a child that doesn't travel, now if I was traveling, fuck yeah, I think this would be a huge thing with people who travel that they feel like they're the most um, prone to get the virus, not people who stay in their own homes, stay within their state, etc. But anyway, but Roman is having to go from state to state, and that's just bad, very bad. But I do think this whole virus thing is being blown way out of proportion. But anyway, uh, let's say Roman Reigns returns the first SmackDown of August, and everyone's finally back. There are fans now. Whoopee! But we don't know that for sure. But let's throw that in a fantasy booking scenario. So beforehand at Backlash, we need the Fiend to be Braun Strowman at Backlash, and that is probably the best thing to do. I think this is what they're already planning for the Fiend to beat Braun. I'm actually very excited for that match, the Fiend versus Braun Strowman. I think Braun and Bray's match at Money in the Bank was match of the night. It was the best thing there, besides the Money in the Bank match itself. Storytelling-wise, it's, it's, it's the best thing. It's one of the best things I've seen. Probably not the best, but probably it's up there. The whole Braun making Bray think he got up in his head, but didn't. Oh my god, that was fantastic. And we could have the Fiend take the title off. Uh, Braun have him hold it up until SummerSlam. And so, first SmackDown of August, we have fans where I'm like, Hey guys, I'm back! And goes out to say how you miss doing WWE stuff. He tries to, but then you, you hear, We're really glad that you're our friend. And this is a friendship that'll never ever end. I have that song memorized. <laughs> and Bray Wyatt's like, Hey Joe! I think you should call him Joe. This is what I think. Remember me? I mean, we go way back. Pretty sure like 2014? But yeah, I, Roman, he should flip-flop between Joe and Roman. I think that would, you know, signify, hey, Roman, weren't you supposed to get a title shot? Oh, um, I know you were. So, I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to give you the gift of facing off against me, Bray Wyatt, at SummerSlam. And that's the match, you know. Bray can do, Bray can probably make that 20 times, 20 times better than I could. There's a lot of people who can do storytelling, booking better than me, and one of them is Bray Wyatt, but but the match is said, Bray Wyatt versus Roman Reigns, not The Fiend versus Roman Reigns. You want to keep Roman as cheered, because people are starting to like him a lot more, and if you have him beat people that the fans also like, you're making them think, oh, this is really? No, boo Roman, boo, because people are still in that mindset, yeah, he's the face of the company, That they, we still have that mindset, we do. And whether or not he's being pushed as such, still. But having him take the title off of Bray Wyatt but not the Fiend, I feel like that'll take less backlash off of him. And not many people will hate him. Again, I think if it was the Fiend and having Roman beat him, people were like, BOO! And you also have to consider the fact that Bray Wyatt has had a match with Roman before, so he knows how to get up inside his head. The reason why Bray didn't, or the Fiend did face off against Braun at Money in the Bank is... Bray never had a one-on-one -on -one match with him before. He doesn't know how to get up in his head yet. Bray now does. Which is why... And I think if we were to have The Miz versus Fiend, th there you go. You could have... Me Bray Wyatt knows how to get up in his head now. And The Fiend could do that. And so, at SummerSlam, we know... I think Bray should do a lot better than he did against Braun Strowman and then The Miz. Like, literally, I think, you know, getting tossed around and all that. That still happens, but he does a lot better, lasts a lot longer. He eats, like, two spears, and the third spear causes Reigns to win. But after the match, Reigns shake Bray's hand. And when Reigns, and then, you, you know, that whole glitch stuff. Not the SmackDown glitch, but, like, like the Fiend glitch, as I'm going to call it. Where goes the screen, and Bray is just staring at Roman very heavily. He is mad. But he doesn't go straight for the title. But I do think that, like, during Roman Reigns matches throughout now in the Royal Rumble, we should have, like, light lights flickering, but nobody's like, but have them, like, not know what's going on. Have Roman sometimes look around, like, what the hell happened, but not then again. Following weeks, like, it, it's normal for him. Like, it doesn't affect him anymore. But I think that would be cool. Kind of like SmackDown glitch with Dolph Ziggler. You know, there's a glitch every time Ziggler pops on screen. 
there was a glitch whenever Roman pops on screen, but this time it's the Fiend, not Bray Wyatt. At the same time, you can have the Fiend go on and face off against someone else. You can have fucking you can have like a, dra a brand split and have him go draft it over to Raw. There's some fresh meat over there, like um. Randy Orton, we all want that, but Roman Reigns is going to hold the title up until WrestleMania. Good. And in between then, you can have him face off against people like Jackson Riker, a face versus face feud with Otis. Not relatively Otis's cash in, but like have Otis eventually cash in on the tag titles or the Intercontinental title. That would be great. Not the world title. He ain't ready for it. Even though he's comedic as hell, I love him so much. He's just a big old teddy bear. Just have Roman be like, hey, do you want to match with me? I don't want to cash in my briefcase yet. Well, you don't have to. Just a normal one-on-one -on -one match. You can have the title on if you want, but you don't have to cash in your briefcase. Kind of like what Seth did in that match with Lesnar and Rain or Cena with a triple threat. You know, I'm have a face for space feud with Kofi. I think that'd be nice. And like maybe we can set it up for a New Day breakup because Kofi gets all the world title shots. He, let's say that. And then we could have them face off against Sheamus. That would be nice, I guess. Then Dolph Ziggler. Again, that would be nice. These are pretty much the top five people I would have face off against Reigns, not Baron Corbin. And at the Elimination Chamber, we can have Reigns face off against all five of them in the Chamber. That would be nice. But yeah, I think Jack Riker is your best bet there. But anyway, uh, but at the Royal Rumble, Bray Wyatt does end up winning the match. Um... Let's say enters number 30 here. We're really glad that you're our friend. And this is a friendship that'll never, ever end. And then Bray, you know, pops in the ring, eliminates two people, done, he wins. Uh, yeah. Not really, but that was, that was, that was not really. You have him, like, you know, eliminate one person right off the bat, be like, yay, I did it! And have him get thrown under the middle rope. These out of the match for the rest of the time. He just chills there, like, hey guys. And then he eliminates the last person. Let's say Daniel Bryan. Let me dream. And then it's made official. After the Elimination Chamber, you know, we see the, what we've been seeing for months, the, the Fiend's face during Roman Reigns segments. And finally, after so much build-up, we finally get WrestleMania, Roman Reigns versus The Fiend. Reigns has held the title for a long time at this point, for a while. Let's say six or seven months. That's a nice little reign. Give it back to The Fiend. Oh, give it back to The Fiend and, like, have him hold it for a year. Have Roman Reigns get drafted over to Smack or Raw. You know, because that's where the face of the WWE usually goes, is Raw, which is a weird thing to say, but it's true. And then at WrestleMania 38, you can have Aleister Black be the one to defeat The Fiend, not, not defeat, defeat, but, um, because, you know, everybody wants Aleister Black to be the one to dethrone The Fiend, so let's have that gone wrong, have Aleister Black win the Royal Rumble next year, or the following year, and have the one him beat you know, have the thing go on this dominant run, having him go through people like Kofi Kingston, Big E, Xavier Woods, the entire New Day. Have him go through the Miz again. That'd be nice. Have him go through Chris. No, sorry, I was embarrassing Chris Jericho. Who can't have him go through Ryback? Hmm. Undertaker, Goldberg. There are plenty of people, right? <laughs> I'm sure. Maybe no. Eric Rowan's gone. That's right. <laughs> That's whoops. <laughs> yeah, WWE released a lot of people Bray worked with. Um, maybe Chad Gable? Maybe? I don't know. There's not a lot of people The Fiend has left. But anyway, guys, that's the end of this video. Sorry it's so short, but thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Links to my main channel, gaming channel, Instagram, and Twitter in the description below. And if you got a wrestling booking idea, tell me down in the description below. There's a good chance I'll do it. But anyway, guys, it's the guy one saying, peace.